Welcome to Sports Doctor. Sports Doctor is a live presentation, so we encourage you to call into the show and ask your questions on injury, rehab, training, or technique. We'll be taking your calls shortly. Call 767-8884 for your direct line to Sports Doctor. Here's your host for tonight's program, medical reporter Joe Chapana. Well, hello there, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Sports Doctor, brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center in Sicklerville, Woodbury, and Turnersville, their brand new location. They're offering free evaluations for the next two weeks. At the end of the program, we'll give you numbers to take advantage of that offer. We are talking general sports injuries tonight. So pretty much an open forum tonight. Uh, and if you are someone who is an athlete or a weekend warrior or uh, even someone with a, with a general injury, we want to hear from you tonight. Uh, taking your calls tonight, we have Dr. Merrick Wetzler, who's an orthopedic surgeon with South Jersey Orthopedic Associates in Washington Township and Voorhees. He's also the team physician for the U.S. men's rugby team. And uh, to his right is Dave Anselmo, who is a physical therapist with Cross Keys Physical Therapy. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Pleased to have you here. Dave, we're going to start with you because uh, a lot of people are into this mode. They, they want to begin an exercise program. They haven't exercised maybe several months, maybe a year. What advice would you have for people in that predicament? I always recommend anyone who has not exercised for several months or a year to go see their family physician basically for a medical clearance to clear them from any underlying factors that may limit their ability um, to be able to participate in an exercise program in a safe manner. Um, they might have cardiac problems or orthopedic problems that might cause further damage if they don't get checked out first. We can limit it. So team, you see your team physician first or uh, your uh, family physician. Dr. Wetzler, being outside playing sports or exercising can pose different risk. What other areas should athletes and coaches be aware of as far as preventing injuries? Well, when, if you look at ways to prevent injuries, the first way I tell a lot of coaches is to look around your surroundings. Look at the field, make sure there's not any obstacles in the field that the person get hurt with. Make sure there's not any uh, holes or big clumps of rocks or glass or anything like that that they can, they can really uh, get hurt at. The other things that, that I take a look into to prevent injuries is also the, the appropriate attire. You should wear the appropriate shoes or cleats or sneakers for the appropriate sports. You shouldn't be playing sports in your, your, your dress shoes. You should have the right, right shoes or sneakers for that. I was recently in the, my own um, department store, and I noticed all the different types of shoes there are. There's walking shoes, running shoes, casual sneakers. It, it really does make a difference? Absolutely. I mean, it does, for running, I mean, you should wear a pair of running sneakers or cross-training. Um, if you do any sort of running for any length of period of time, um, after about three months, the shock absorbing ability of the sneakers does decrease and you should get a new pair of sneakers. So if you do anywhere from anywhere from 12 to 20 miles a week, after three months, I suggest you get a new pair of sneakers to help you prevent getting um, such things as uh, stress fractures. Uh, and uh, patellofemoral problems in the knee and so forth. Okay, now we mentioned earlier in the program, Dr. Wetzler, uh, just coming back from Russia, team physician for the U.S. men's rugby team. Does it make a difference when treating an athlete if the athlete is uh, a high school athlete, a weekend warrior, versus the pro or Olympic level athlete? Well, I mean, it does in some respects, but um, in most respects not. Um, the reason I say that is that the risks and the benefits of getting someone to return to the sport earlier or later. In a high school athlete, say a freshman, a sophomore, or junior, the games are, they might not be starting, the games are not as, as important as you say, the Olympic Games for a um, high school athlete or uh, one of my athletes who uh, hurt his shoulder to try to get back to face the uh, Russian national team. Uh, you have to weigh the risk and the benefits of getting the person back earlier and if they have a chance of re-injuring themselves and so forth. Okay, let's uh, reach out to you, the TV viewer. Uh, we're talking general sports injuries tonight, so that pretty much covers anything. The knee, the ankle, shoulder, back, 
neck, what have you. Uh, Dr. Wetzler is here to take your calls. Also, Dave Anselmo, who is with uh, Krosky's Physical Therapy. Our toll-free number for your questions, 1-888-634-7488. Locally, it's 856-767-8884. Some of you may prefer to email, and if you'd like to email your question to us, we'll check that. Uh, the email address is WPSJTV at AOL.com. Again, the toll-free number 1-888-634-7488. For your questions tonight about general sports injuries you may be experiencing. Uh, Dave, as a therapist, does the condition of the uh, or fitness level of the patient play a role in how you treat the person? Well, yeah. I mean, patients ask me all the time, how do these athletes rehab back so much faster? I mean, it's, it's pretty basic. I mean, they have better flexibility, better blood supply, therefore you have healthier soft tissue. And anytime you have better flexibility and better soft tissue, you're going to rehab back faster because they don't have to go through the, the soreness period or so uh, that type of uh, thing. So they rehab back a lot faster. Now, uh, I know with older athletes, uh, the shoulder tends to be a problem. Give us a, an anatomy. I know you've got the model right in front of you. Show us some of the, uh, the factors uh, that play a part in the shoulder. Sure. This is the main bone here. This is the humerus. This bone right here. Okay, this is the head of the humerus here. This is the scapula. This is the clavicle, rather than the collarbone. Okay, and this is the uh, here forming process, coracoid process, and as you can see, some of the muscles here that attach here, but really can't go into this. It's more difficult. Okay, and uh, Dr. Wetzer, what are what are common injuries to the shoulder that uh, you see athletes suffer from? You can divide injuries in the shoulder into two categories: acute and chronic. The acute injuries. Um, the AC joint separation, shoulder separation is when um, either an athlete falls out on an outstretched arm or lands on their shoulder. What happens is that you injure this joint called the acromioclavicular joint. It's not a serious injury, but it, it tends to be very painful. And depending on the severity of it, it can keep you out anywhere from 7 to 10 days to 6 to 8 weeks, depending on how many ligaments and how much, how to how much you injured the joint. The other joint that can injure, which is much more severe, is, is the shoulder joint proper or the glenohumeral joint. If you dislocate that joint, you tear a lot more structures, and a lot of times th th that requires surgery um, because the, what the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint has the most range of motion of any joint in the body. It, it's very similar to like a golf ball on a golf tee. It doesn't have a lot of inherent stability. There are two types of um, structures that provide the stability, static and dynamic structures. The static structures are ligaments attached to uh, the flat part of the bone or the glenoid um, through the, the labrum, which is like a cuff of uh, fibrous tissue that attaches to the bone. The dynamic stabilizers are the shoulders. So when you have an injury to the, the static stabilizers, the, the dynamic stabilizers, a rotator cuff, becomes even more important. So that's why a lot of times when you do have a shoulder injury as such, th that we doctors do send the patients to rehabilitation. And that's why rehabilitation is so important, because without rehabbing the dynamic stabilizers appropriately, the patient could have a lot of problems and uh, may require uh, surgery when if they, they rehabbed it appropriately, surgery might have been be able to be prevented. And, of course, if you are having problems with your shoulder and you'd like to have someone look at it, uh, Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center is offering free evaluations for the next two weeks. We'll give you the number to schedule an appointment at the end of the program. Right now, toll free if you have questions about your shoulder or really any uh, sports-related injury. Our toll-free number is 1-888-634-7488. Locally, it is 856-767-8884. Email address is wpsjtv at aol.com. Dave, the shoulder seems to be uh, one of the more commonly injured parts uh, of the body for an athlete. Why is the shoulder so vulnerable to injury? Well, it's like Dr. Wessel just nicely explained. It's uh, the most mobile bo uh, joint in the body. Therefore, it gives up its stability for more mobility. Um, it's really stabilized by the, the muscles, tendons, and ligaments. And if you don't have a good balance in the musculature in the front, the top, the back, and actually inferiorly as well, then you, you can have a problem on one of those areas, and you can cause not only tendonitis, you see subluxation, subluxations or dislocations. It's all because you don't have a real good balance within the shoulder joint itself. 
Okay, and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about dislocation versus separation when we come back from break. Also, we want to take some of your phone calls. Our toll-free number is 1-888-634-7488. Locally, 856-767-8884. We're talking general sports injuries tonight on Sports Doctor, brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center in Sicklerville, Woodbury, and their brand-new location in Washington Township. Uh, stay with us. More of our program right after this. Sports Doctor will be right back. Hi, I'm Kevin Ross from the Kansas City Chiefs. When I need physical therapy, I chose Cross Keys Physical Therapy, one of the leading rehab centers in South Jersey. Cross Keys Physical Therapy offers aquatic therapy programs that will help you strengthen weak muscles and improve your flexibility. Our highly skilled physical and occupational therapists are experienced with working with athletes and non-athletes alike. So if you need to get back to work or back to play, Cross, Cross Keys Physical, physical Therapy. Sickleville, Woodbury, and Berlin. Imagination. It may be the most precious of natural resources. To a child, Playtime is a rehearsal for the real life they will one day inherit from us. How will they handle the challenges? What choices do they make? Who do they pretend to be? Love that part of your child that longs to daydream. Don't underestimate the power of play. All right, back we are. You're watching Sports Doctor, brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center, Sicklerville, Woodbury, their new location in Washington Township. Offering free evaluations for the next two weeks. We'll give you those numbers at the end of the program. Uh, we're with Dave Anselmo, who's a physical therapist from Cross Keys, and also Dr. Merrick Wetzler, an orthopedic surgeon with South Jersey Orthopedic Associates in Washington Township and Voorhees. He's also the team physician for the U.S. Men's Rugby Team. You can reach us live right now with your question at 1-888-634-7488 or locally, 855 Six seven six seven eight 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 four. I believe we have Bill holding on the line from Sicklerville. Bill, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you for watching. Your question for Dr. Wetzler. Um, I play a lot of tennis, and uh, I started uh, having a feeling of uh, uh, numbness in my leg above my knee, and then it seemed to, I don't know whether it was there before the numbness, but it progressed to where I had a, uh, a depression midway up my quadricep, and above that a... Uh, uh, Kind of look like a lump, um, and I still have it. Uh, my leg is achy uh, often, but it kind of comes and goes, and I I don't know I really don't know what it is, whether it's a nerve or uh, a muscle problem. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you have any? Have you seen anything like that, or have any ideas what it could possibly be? It sounds like just from your description, and it's difficult. You might even have two problems there. The lump in your knee and the depression could have been a partially torn muscle. Do you remember injuring it at all or anything like that? Well, uh, I don't remember anything, anything uh, dramatic or, you know, traumatic, but uh, I did for a while have, you know, like my, my quadriceps felt, my quad, right quadricep uh, was um, uh, pretty sore. And, you know, perhaps that was it, but I, you know, I'm sore often because I, you know, do a lot of sports and, uh, I just didn't just thought it was a uh, general soreness, and it may have been. I'm I'm really not sure. So I it don't definitely know. It sounds like you probably have a partial rupture, uh, which I, is just part of the muscle is torn off from the bone, and that's uh, what, what, why do you have that lump and depression? Now the numbness, the tingling, the burning that you have in your leg um, it sounds more like neurologic in nature. Either you have an entrapped nerve, or you could even have something going on in your back. What you need to do is get, get checked out either by your family physician or an orthopedic surgeon to, to evaluate um, both your knee and your back to, to find out exactly what's going on there and treat it appropriately. Yeah, well, when I said my knee, I, I, I misspoke. I meant it's uh, in the lo above my knee, the lower part of my quadricep, uh, the numbness, and it seems to have mostly gone. You know, that part of it seems to have uh, faded. The other thing, I don't know whether there's any relationship or not or whether it's separate, is that um, it seems that I often have a, uh, uh, an achy hip at the same time my quadricep bothers me, um, whether that's arthritis or, you know, a nerve impingement or something, I don't know. If the pain is in, in your groin, um, that's usually hip arthritis. 
If the pain is on the lateral aspect of the hip, on the outside of the hip, that can be either uh, some tendonitis or bursitis because the, the hip joint is deep inside the groin and uh, the burst, your greater trochanteric bursa and uh, your iliotibial band are on the outside. So anytime you have an achy pain like that after you play, I, um, the best thing to do is just put some ice on it, take a mild anti-inflammatory, and anytime you have any chronic pain that does not go away within uh, 24 hours, should get checked out by um, the appropriate medical personnel. Bill, good question. Thank you for watching. Again, uh, Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center offering free evaluations for the next two weeks, and we'll give you the numbers to uh, schedule appointments uh, for that uh, if you so desire. Our toll-free number right now, though, with your questions about general sports injuries, 1-888-634-7488. Locally, 856-767-8884, our email address, WPSJTV at AOL.com. Uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about, we were talking about the shoulder uh, before the break, and um, you hear about athletes dislocating their shoulder, Dr. Wetzler. What are treatment options for the person who has dislocated their shoulder, and uh, what factors come into play when you decide how to treat that person? A dislocated shoulder, like I, I did say before, is when the, the shoulder joint, the, the humerus, dislocates from the, the glenoid. There's some soft tissue around there, the labrum that, attach, that all the ligaments attach. When you, you, when you dislocate your shoulder, usually you pull the labrum off the glenoid. And when we do surgery, we restore the labrum back to the, the glenoid. Now, the options are uh, basically two types of surgery are done. One is orthoscopic reconstruction, and one is an open reconstruction. When do you do each depends on, at least in my, my hands, on the type of athlete, how many times you have dislocated, and so forth. The, um, on females who are, are non-contact athletes and who have only dislocated once or twice, I try to do it orthoscopically. That means I do it all through the scope, we um, insert these little screws that have sutures on the end, and we're able to pass sutures. We insert these screws into the glenoid, and we're able to pass sutures around the labrum and tie it back down. The reason why we try to do it orthoscopically um, in females um, is because we, we leave a little less scar. They're non-contact athletes usually and um, the range of motion is usually restored quicker and a little less painful. In an open reconstruction, which I like to do more in a contact athlete, because when, you're, when you do things arthroscopically, you're, you're actually tying a knot outside and pushing it through a cannula into the, uh, where you need to put it. When you do something open, you're tying the knots right down. So you, you do get a, a better and more secure fixation um, okay. when you do it orthoscopic, when you do it open. Let me interrupt for a second. I believe we have a non-contact uh, uh, person on the phone, Virginia, uh, from Lindenwald. Virginia, are you there? Yes, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm a serious bike rider, and I'm noticing that my knee's starting to hurt after about 15 miles. And I just keep going, but then it hurts kind of a lot for the next couple of days and sometimes even up to a week after a long ride. Um, am I damaging my knee by pushing through the pain when it hurts? Where does it hurt, Virginia? Um, just behind the kneecap. Uh, it's very common to have patellofemoral pain. Um, it's one of the most common complaints that orthopedic surgeons see in their office. And it can be due, due, due to a lot of different things, muscle imbalance, muscle tightness, muscle weakness, and so forth. I think that in your case, I don't think you're really doing increasing damage. I think there are definitely modifications we can, you can do to your bike to help prevent um, in, further injury to it and prevent pain, as well as a lot of therapy that can be done to stretch the tight muscles and so forth. I mean, Dave is probably better off telling what you can do to... Uh, treat the patellofemoral joint. Right, yeah, there's, uh, we need really, once again, he mentioned the muscle balance, we really need to come in for the evaluation to take a look at you, and you might have a little muscle imbalance where the muscles on one side is stronger than the other side, which could be pulling that patella, 
and causing that to grind a little bit on the condyle and causing some inflammation. And it might not happen until later on. Like you say, you get to 15 miles, it could be just the fact that the muscle on the one side is fatiguing out and the other, other muscle is taking over and causing that to grind a little bit. So maybe it might be something that we could look at and help you with. What Virginia mentioned, though, I, is a, a constant um, source of conflict, I imagine, for, for anyone who's working out, and that is the issue of when you actually see someone. She mentioned, you know, toughening it out. Uh, and she was concerned about whether or not that would actually make it worse or if, if it's something, you know, she just needs to tough it out for. What, what's a good guideline for, for when you should see someone about, about really any type of uh, complaint like that? Muscle soreness is normal. I mean, anytime you exercise or push your body to the limits, you're going to have muscle soreness. The key is that anytime you have an acute onset of pain, or pain that lasts for more than 24 hours, I think you should think about getting it checked out. Those are just general guidelines. Um, any pain that it, it occurs every time you do something, you might also want to get that checked out as well. I don't know if Dave had right. anything to add to that. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, and what concerned me a little bit about the caller is that she said some of her pain lasts like a week at times. Mm -hmm. So that made me a little concerned. Um, once again, like he said, anything beyond 24 hours, then you have more soreness to after that, then it's something that you may probably should be getting take a look at by your family physician um, because you might be causing further damage if it's lasting longer than that. So um, uh, she might have a good, might be a good person to go see somebody about. Okay, and don't forget they're offering free evaluations for the next two weeks at Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center. We'll give you those numbers at the end of the program right now on our toll-free number at one 634 7488 From Haddon Heights, Tom, are you there? Oh, uh, yes, I am. Tom, thank you for watching. Your question, please. Oh, uh, yes, but let me first compliment you on your show so far. Thank you. I think, did we lose Tom? Okay. Let's get back to uh, shoulder separation um, and dislocation. Is there a difference between those two, or are they the same thing? Like I talked about earlier, the shoulder separation is really the uh, acromioclavicular joint. It's a much more self-limiting uh, problem. It usually happens when the athlete falls either directly on the shoulder uh, or when he falls out an outstretched arm. Uh, the AC joint, the, the AC joint is the only attachment of the shoulder and the arm, bony attachment to, to the rest of the axial skeleton. It takes a, it, the clavicle acts like a strut, and that joint is there to help support the, the shoulder and. Uh, allow it to give the full range of motion and allow the shoulder to do what it needs to do to people to, to do many different types of sports and activities. Okay, we are talking general sports injuries tonight on Sports Doctor. We are going to talk about preventing uh, dislocation from occurring. Also, we'll try to get to uh, rotator cuffs and labrum tears and also take more of your phone calls if we have time. Again, it's Sports Doctor. General sports injuries are topic tonight. Toll-free number is 1-888-634-7488. We need to take a short break. We'll come back with more of our program right after this. Sports Doctor will be right back. Hi, I'm Kevin Ross from the Kansas City Chiefs. When I need physical therapy, I chose Cross Keys Physical Therapy, one of the leading rehab centers in South Jersey. Cross Keys Physical Therapy offers aquatic therapy programs that will help you strengthen weak muscles and improve your flexibility. Our highly skilled physical and occupational therapists are experienced with working with athletes and non-athletes alike. So if you need to get back to work or back to play, Cross Keys Physical Therapy. Sickleville, Woodbury, and Berlin. It's Sports Doctor. It's brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center, Sicklerville, Woodbury, Washington Township. We're going to give you the numbers for each of those centers to schedule an appointment for a free evaluation. But first, let's talk to Sue, who joins us from Pensauk. And Sue, are you there? Sue. Yes. There you are. Welcome to Sports Doctor. Your question tonight? Um, I had a question about the shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, what's the difference in, uh, like, the recovery if you have an arthroscopy done or if you have an open shoulder, do you get full range of motion in both? Okay, we're just talking about the two forms of treatment. You, you do get full range of motion in both. Uh, it, it does, it, it depends on the technique you use. 
if you just looked at all the techniques you do arthroscopically and all the techniques you do open, and you measured the, the patients who had both, you would see probably a little bit loss of external rotation in the persons who had an open procedure versus um, the person who had an arthroscopic procedure. The reason being is that when you do an open procedure, um, there are two ways to approach the shoulder. One is splitting a muscle, and one is taking a muscle down. If you split a muscle, which is uh, my technique of choice, you usually don't you lose any motion. Um, the, with arthroscopic procedures, you usually have to wait four to six weeks to start rehabbing them versus uh, open procedures where you can start rehabbing them uh, right away. How is the recovery time? Is the recovery time different versus open or arthroscopic? In my hands, no. Uh, they, both, they both get back to playing sports at about the same time. The first six weeks are a little different, different in an um, arth arthroscopic procedure compared to an open procedure. Okay, some email questions coming in here. Uh, Joan from Browns Mills writes, I dislocated my shoulder two years ago. It still bothers me. It just doesn't feel right as if there is something rubbing in the joint. Is this common after a dislocation, and when will I get full mobil mobility back? Well, you've been two years already. If you don't have full mobility now, you're probably never going to get it unless... Um, you go see a therapist and see what's going on with that. What could be rubbing around is, as I told, discussed earlier, the labrum could be torn and you could have um, the labrum flapping in and out of your joint when you do, do different motions. Okay, another email question here. Can you please tell me what is the recovery time for knee surgery? I tore some cartilage in my knee. The doctor wants to operate, but I'm afraid that I will lose too much time at work and lose my job. It depends, A, it depends on what you do. If you have a desk job, you usually can get back in a week. B, it depends on which knee it is. If it's a left knee, usually you, you, you get back a little bit quicker because obviously you can drive with your right knee. If you operate on your right knee, you can't drive until you're fully, almost fully recovered. And uh, C, it depends on what they have to do um, in the knee. If they take the cartilage out, usually if you're an athlete or a laborer, it might take you four to six weeks to get back to, to doing uh, work and so forth. But every patient's different. Every patient gets back at their own rate. So uh, you might get back quicker or slower depending on many different factors. Okay, we've been talking about the free evaluation offer for the next two weeks at Cross Keys Physical Therapy Sports Medicine Center. I'm going to put the numbers up on the screen. These are the numbers you need to call. And uh, w what you should do is schedule an appointment for your free evaluation. The Sicklerville number is 856-728-1900. The Woodbury office is 856-853-0988. The new Washington Township office, 856 856- 374-3707. Call those numbers during uh, business hours. Someone will be happy to uh, see that uh, you're able to uh, get scheduled for your free evaluation. I want to thank Dr. Wetzler for joining us this evening. Uh, and he is with um, South Jersey Orthopedic Associates, an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, they're in Washington Township and Voorhees, and also the team physician for the U.S. men's rugby team. How'd they do, by the way? Uh, we, we played well. We lost both games, but we played well. And uh, it's just a stepping stone to getting better and becoming uh, one of the best in the world. No when major injuries. I guess that was the main thing. Yes. And Dave Anselmo also joining us too from Cross Keys Physical Therapy. We'll be back two weeks from tonight with another edition of Sports Doctor. Until then, I'm Joe Chapana. Stay well. WPSJ-TV has been producing television shows in the Delaware Valley for over 10 years. Call us to produce your program.